When I say Arizona, you say Cardinals. Welcome to the Jersey Room. There's some special memories here over over the years and um, some Hall of Famers, future Hall of Famers. And this is the whole Cardinals history. Pat Tillman, that's one I'm gonna always keep near and dear to the heart. Of course, my boy Adrian Wilson uh, gave that to me for my 50th birthday. All the memories of our, our Cardinal family. You know, it's, we came here in 1995 and was embraced by the Cardinals, embraced by everybody that sat in that stand. The ball is intercepted by Lassiter. You know, it brings back a lot of memories and great memories. Just warming up in camp. This is my office. I always have my picture on my on my desk. <laughs> Keep your picture on your desk in your office. We went to um, a ring dance together. Back in the day, the junior ring dance was a big thing, so you gotta have a date, and that's how it all started. High school sweethearts. He went off to Butler County Community College first, and then he went over to KU in '92. First, he had to make sure you you knew he was from the University of Kansas. All right, that's the first thing. Kwame thought he was the booger with the sugar. I mean, he, <laughs> undrafted free agent, thought he had the sweet rag. He'd tell you, I should have been drafted. You're a bum. Like, he thought he was the guy, and he walked with that air. I credit it to not arrogance, but literally confidence that even if you come from the University of Kansas that's not known as a football powerhouse, you have the ability to be here, and that's what Kwame did. He knew that he had to stand out to be able to make the team, and he did that. He just worked hard. Kwame was not shy in letting you know, hey, I'm here, I'm going to be here. He always wanted to try to prove it. You know, he'd always say, give me a chance. He fought hard on special teams. Hey, that's me, baby. Got himself a chance in, as a safety. Next thing you know, he's a starting free safety. And then he, now he's out there making plays with the, with the big boys. No, oh, baby, not this side. He always wanted to be that starting safety. He said it over and over again. I'm going to take your spot. Whoever's in there, I'm going to take their spot. And eventually he took their spot. Once I get on the field, I ain't never given that spot back. And he didn't. It was crazy because we couldn't figure out why we were not good. We had a bunch of players, but we couldn't get it together. We knew internally what we're capable of doing. It changed. The narrative changed somewhere along the lines where we found a way to win. Jake got better. The defense was stopping teams. They kept giving us the ball. Um, the first halves were ugly, but the second halves were so much better. And we got the name Cardiac Cards because we just kept coming back and getting wins. There was not a time that I sensed any, any pressure. But what I noticed was just like a lot of great teams, they begin to mature as the season go on. But knowing that you had a chance to get into the playoffs, that was the, you know, if you, if you won those last three games, uh, you had to do something pretty special. Jackie to win it for the Cardinals here in overtime. It's on the way. It is good, and the Cardinals win. And they're even at 7-7, seven and seven, and they're still alive for a wild card berth in the playoff race with two games left to play. The bigger goal, begin to take precedence. The snap, it's on the way. It looks good, good! One second to go and the Cardinals lead by two. We're not quite up to the top of that thing where we can see over yet, man. We've still got one more game that we've got to win next, next week. Those are the moments that you remember. Every fan in Phoenix is gonna enjoy this. It's the first time. We saw how uh, capable the Cardinals organization was to galvanize the city. When you watch our stadium go from minimum numbers to exciting numbers to people in the stands and now we're not a visiting home team, that was amazing. A game that decided whether we make the playoffs or not. We were at peace and it was just a moment Somebody needed to make a play, and it was Kwame. 
everybody has tendencies and they stick to them. Whatever helps you win, they stick to them. But uh, fan works helps out a lot. So I know what they're going to run once the ball is high. Two wide outs to the left at the 39. Whalahan back to throw again. Looks down the middle and lets it go and is intercepted at the 30 yard line by Kwame Lasseter. Kwame said it best on TV that day. He said, man, keep that camera on me. You're about to see something pretty special. With time, winds up, goes deep, far side of the field, intercepted by Lasseter, and he runs out of the end zone with it. And the first half comes to an end. Wheel a hand to throw with time. Far side of the field, and the ball is intercepted by Lasseter, his third of the game. Kwame made those interceptions in practice. So I wasn't surprised Kwame rising up to that moment and having a game of a lifetime. For a DB to get two interceptions, that's special, right? The snap. Three. All right, now God's on your side. Throws it deep. Four. Jesus is in your pocket. It's intercepted. Back comes Kwame, Kwame Lasseter. Lasseter. Lasseter out to the right side. Kwame Lasseter with his fourth interception of the game. By the time it got to the fourth one, I think my head was exploding, and I was just like, what in the world just happened? But I was thanking God during the whole experience because he needed that. We've been in this moment so much. Like the last three weeks, four weeks, we've kind of seen anything can happen. Eric Metcalf gets a kickoff chunk of yards, puts it in position. We run one play. Hey, Frank, you, you got to run a 12-yard hook, turn around, get, get down, and hit the ground. But now we got to make a field goal. 52 yards, and here it is. To try to win it, put the Cardinals in the playoffs. It's on the way, it's got the leg, it is good! The Cardinals win! The Cardinals are in the playoffs! The Cardinals win! 52 yards by Jackie! Yeah! Here we are, the fans carrying the goalposts off, and we're running down the field, and we're hugging and crying, and it's a good moment. To see it finally come together and win a moment like that, it was a lot of tears and a lot of crying. I just walked off the field quietly, just keep it all inside until I got in the locker room. That felt good. You know, we've been winning that way all year. If it's not closer, it's not us. That last uh, drive, 16 seconds of uh, time left on the clock, uh, uh, that's more than we ever expected from the Cardiac Cardinals of the 70s. That Monday, we're in the meeting, and Mr. Bitwell comes out, like the whole family comes out. And they literally do this, they, they stand on the stage and they say, this team hasn't been in the playoffs in 50 years. And Mr. B started tearing up. It just was amazing, man. Everybody, I guess, I still get tears because it's crazy. So when I think about that and how much it really meant to the organization, to the Cardinals, um, being a part of that, you know, being able to you know, be a part of something pretty special like that and finally coming together. Uh, and the fans here in Arizona getting a chance to kind of experience that was pretty special. They ran that tight end on the inner route, just let him go to the back. Right, right, right. And, and they sent a number two across the field. I didn't know much about Arizona when I first got here. I actually came in late. I didn't sign my contract right away and I came in late. And I'll never forget coming in and Kwame looked at me and said, what took you so long? And I'm like, who is this? I'm like, who is this dude talking to me like this, right? So I had, I had no clue who he was. You know, we ended up becoming great friends throughout, you know, that, that first season. Right now, he's talking about that uh, six when I came down that league. It was a privilege for us to help pour into the Adrian Wilsons, to help pour into the Corey Shavers, and even the Pat Tillmans. If he's in a game, it's a screen or a trick play. Not ever, ever considering of any competition of somebody replacing us. We knew from discussion and internally that if the young players were not better after we had transitioned out, that we were poor leaders. So to see that, that culture on the team was significant, particularly in a defensive back uh, room. And a lot of that had to do with uh, Kwame Lasseter and his attitude toward the game. Regardless of who you are, who you think you are, people are always watching you. So you just do the right things and uh, you know, guys will follow you. Whoa, Pat! His vision was, you know what, I'm going to be that great player. I'm going to be that guy that people remembers too. And he became that guy. The knowledge he had, I just said, he didn't mind sharing it with anybody else. 
Like some people want to hold that, like I'm going to make myself better and I ain't going to help you out. That was not his mindset. He was always trying to help the other players. He was always trying to help the younger players. And he was still doing that till the day he passed. Getting that phone call from the hospital and from the gym that, you know, he had had a heart attack at the gym. And I don't want to get too teary eyed, but when, once we, you know, after he was pronounced dead, we waited for, you know, them to let us leave. We opened the doors. I saw Nicole Bidwell. I saw half of the Cardinals team from back in the 90s. It was over 100 people, just hug after hug. And I knew that we would have the support that we need um, just to get through that. So um, it, it, it's been, Three years, but each day is get better. It does get better. It was shocking for sure. Um, you know, you just you just get a you know sense of sadness. You know, just you know, I was just you know I was just with them. You know, a month a month prior to that, the first thing that came to my mind when it happened was his family. He and his wife and that teamwork and them always having the heart for the philanthropic uh, influence that a current player as well as a former player, the work that he did post-career. That's what I think about. When I hear Kwame, I also see Erica and the family and that legacy that he's left. Their heart is huge. They are looking always to help somebody else. They are those type of people that be there. He made everybody smile. When I say Arizona, you say Cardinals. Can you do that? Arizona! 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 Let me say this, man. This is a great atmosphere. I appreciate you guys coming out. When we do, they doing big things on the football field. This is what I'm talking about. You have to show your support. My kids, I close my eyes sometimes and it's like they, whenever they say something, it's like it comes right out of their dad's mouth. My dad used to say, you put the work in, it'll all work out. And I feel like that's self-explanatory, really. You want that feeling at the end of the week because you work hard all week. Erica Lassiter, the widow of Kwame, good friend of ours who was a terrific player with the Cardinals, passed away tragically at the age of 49 three years ago. Erica's son, Kwame Lassiter II, played at Kansas, undrafted rookie for the Bengals. Great picture with Kwame and his dad. How cool would it be to see Kwame Lassiter's son, Kwame Lassiter II, make an NFL roster. He always told us be the best. And it was, whether we was talking about football, mainly it was football, but in life, be a good person, because that's going to carry yourself a long way. But be the best in every aspect of life. And I, I to this day, I'm going to get it tattooed on me one day. <laughs> I'm looking forward to, you know, seeing what's next for the Lassiter boys and girls and families and um, just, you know, how we continue on and keep his legacy moving. So this is the ball with the four interceptions in one game to clinch the playoff berth. Still a record that has not been broken. This is uh, near and dear Arizona 16, San Diego Chargers 13. And I hope this paint never fades away. I love it. You go down there and make plays, you get one shot at making a play. That's like hitting the lottery. You got one shot at it, you better make it happen.